My grip always gives out when I do kettlebell swings. That's because you're a woman and you are weak. Yeah, that's no cap, bruh. So what am I supposed to do? I don't know, you can barely swing an 18 pound kettlebell. Straight up on God, mad facts. Man. I can swing way more than 18 pounds. Yeah, I highly doubt it. Truthfully sounds a little sus, bruh. I'll show you. What's going on friends? Welcome back to the channel. If you're highly offended by the previous little skit you saw, please let me know on a scale of one to 10 exactly how offended you are. Anything less than a score of eight, just go ahead and save the algorithm some work and ban yourself from all social media. Moving on past that, today we're talking about kettlebell grip fatigue how you can manage it, and how you can make it not be the ultimate factor for your endurance in this type of exercise. Kettlebell grip fatigue is definitely an issue for a lot of people, especially for beginners or people who have not been very consistent with kettlebell swings, even though they've been working out for a long time. Something to note with cast iron kettlebells is that the diameter of the handle gets bigger and bigger as the weight of the bell gets bigger and bigger. This is something I discussed a little bit with a review of the competition bell by Kettlebell Kings where competition bells have the same size handle no matter what the weight is. If you've ever done any like axle bar deadlifts or maybe put some fat grips on a pull-up bar or something like that to make the diameter of whatever you're holding to bigger, you'll notice that it makes a huge impact on your grip strength. This is what happens when you move from a tiny bell to a big bell. Get out of here. I don't know if I stole this cue from my coach or I stole it from somebody else on the internet, but something that I've been implementing and also telling some of my other kettlebell and exercise athletes here at the gym is flashing the grip at the top of the kettlebell swing is a great way to have a very brief break while also maintaining some stability at the bottom so you can execute that powerful swing. Amos is extremely clingy today for some reason and I don't know why. Now, especially for my newer folks and for folks who value the ground that they're doing swings on and want to save as much damage from happening, is that letting go of the bell briefly while the bell is kind of hovering in air can be very scary because one, you don't wanna drop the bell and destroy the concrete or whatever floor you're swinging on. But also if you lose grip or you can't grab it fast enough, just by going after the bell and trying to recuperate from the poor technique of grabbing it back again, this could make you, you know, really prone to injury, especially with a heavier bell. It seems like with people who are new to the kettlebell swing, they're often very tight because they wanna make sure they don't screw something up. So that tension translates to the grip and they death grip the handle while they're doing their swings. And then when they fatigue, they have to stop where everything feels good, but their hands are shot and they cannot maintain the grip anymore. Being able to relax at the top is a good way to manage some fatigue. And you should be able to almost like take your hands off to where the swings are just sitting on my thumbs, where I can just do all kinds of crazy stuff. You might have noticed in that last clip that I was doing kettlebell swings with socks and sandals on. What you may not have noticed is that I have not a care in the world and you have no power here. I call these the tactical Burks, Birkenstocks, the real deal, not the fake deal. I'm always real as all you should know. I'm rich, I got a lot of money, so I don't buy fake stuff. Buy nice or buy twice. Even if you have a bell that's quite a bit heavier, it still shouldn't change how the swing ends up at the top. All these bells should be slightly weightless when you finish the swing, and then you regain tension, brace for impact if you will, catch, and then come up at the top. Whether it's an 18 pound bell or a 17 pound bell, I can still flash my grip. You can see the fingers coming up a little bit. Even like letting go shouldn't be too crazy because the bell should just float, park with respect. What I've noticed personally over the years is that if you want to get a better grip endurance while doing kettlebell swings, 
you just need to do more swings, especially if you're doing really large sets. Let's say a set of 50 is like not even close to happening. What I would do is I'd rather you do three sets of 30 with maybe two-ish minutes of break in between. Different body parts are going to respond differently. Something like calves. I see people doing like heavy calf raises or big sets of calf raises. Do you wanna know who has some of the biggest calves I have ever seen? It's these long distance hikers, not runners, these hikers. If you're into that kind of thing, if you're an outdoorsy type, just look up Craig Adams and I'm as straight as they come, I'm happily married, but that dude's legs are stacked. I don't think he does much of any like weightlifting or anything else, but if you look at his calves, if you look at the videos that he uploads, it's calves, hamstrings, and some cheeks. And I think it's from miles and miles of high volume reps and high frequency. I've been a YouTube member of Craig Adams' like private community mainly because I just like his stuff. It's super relaxing. It's hours and hours of like silent hiking films. And I can guarantee you I've watched all of it multiple times. And something that I've noticed is just the calves are monstrous and he's not necessarily a huge guy, but relating back to like kettlebell swings, you need to accumulate a lot of volume, very high rep sets over and over again, very frequently, multiple times a week. This is where my 100 swings a day comes into play. Maybe you do something slightly lighter and you do more reps to maintain that tension. That's how you can grow these forearms. It's how you can get a better grip strength. And how you can make your overall kettlebell experience just a little bit more enjoyable and less miserable because you can't do any more swings because your grip is giving out. If this kettlebell grip flashing technique just freaks you out, totally understandable. It's pretty scary. I think about these guys doing the tactical snatch, that switch up at the top. That was terrifying to me, but when I committed to it, I've never dropped it. Knock on wood, but I've never dropped it doing one of those tactical switches at the top with the snatch. Just loosen your grip a little bit at the top and then do it again and then do it again. After you've done that a few times, switch your grip up even more. Maybe you can flash the fingers even more and then you can start opening your hand all the way and then you can start letting the bell go completely and then grabbing it. This is not just about strength and endurance. This is about being very comfortable doing uncomfortable things. As you build your mental ability to manage nerve wracking actions in your life, it crosses over to other things. When you realize, yeah, this is scary as piss, but I remember that last time I did that scary thing, it went okay, it didn't go as bad as I thought. And this is how you build the skill of doing nerve wracking things and getting more capable of entertaining other ideas that also make you nervous. Well, that's basically it for me today. If you got anything valuable out of the video, subscribe to the channel, like the dang video, drop a comment down below to make sure you tell me what you are currently working on or maybe something that you've done to work on your kettlebell grip strength. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or random compliments you'd love me to hear, then hit me up on Instagram at whoisjohnharris. That's basically me all over the place. I'll see you next time, guys. It's been a blast. Um, don't try to take things too seriously. Have a little bit of fun, and remember that everybody's trying to figure this whole thing out everyone and we're all at different levels we're all dealing with crap that we might not even be telling people about so if that's someone like yourself just stick with it okay time heals almost everything there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world and man it just it burns a hole in my heart sometimes thinking that people can be so broken to do something so crazy. So my heart goes out to all those people. We all know what we're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get into the details too much, but just know that everyone's got some crap that is heavy. Trade that for a heavy kettlebell. Trade that for some sort of practice that you can progress in positivity over. I like to have a good time. I also like to poke a little bit. Try not to take things too seriously. Have a good time. Everybody's got a place, but we all gotta take, we all gotta take ownership of ourselves and take control of what we can put into the world. So anyways, that's it. I'm gonna turn this into a rant if I keep going. I'll see you next time.